Hi, I'm the Rick and Rick Turns. Today I'm going to be making a wobbly weed pot. A wobbly weed pot is one that, just like a weevil, it will wobble but it won't fall down. Let's take a closer look. Well these are my uh, tipsy twig vases or wobbly weed pots. The weed pot wobbles but it won't fall down. This weed pot wobbles as well and it won't fall down. However, it wasn't as easy as it you might think. Let's take a look at the evolution of the wobbly weed pot. I make these weed pots by hollowing out the bottom and putting in weights, one way or another. This was the very first one. You can't tell, but uh, it feels significantly heavier than it looks when you pick it up. So it should, uh, when I tip it over, it should go back to vertical. Obviously this one was a failure. Wow. Okay, enough of that. So that one didn't work. I figured it was just too tall. So this is the second one. Once again, it's uh, got weight in here. It's got more weight this time. And obviously it's got a shorter uh, spout on it. So this one worked better. <laughs> if you don't lean it too far over, it will wobble back upright. But if you do lean it just a little bit too much, it's going to clunk on over there. Okay. This is the next one. Obviously, I figured uh, maybe it's that uh, long, tall piece at the top that's causing the problem. This one I hollowed out. This is almost completely hollow, and I filled it up completely with lead shot. So it's better. It will wobble, not fall down, unless, once again, you wobble it too far, and uh, it'll just flop over. Uh, not a big deal, but not really what I wanted either. This one uh, was the first actual success that I had. With this one, I hollowed it out uh, completely in here, and then I filled it about halfway with lead shot, and uh, I poured glue on top of the shot to keep it in place so that it doesn't move around. And this one works the way I want it to. The weed pot wobbles, but it won't fall down. Turn it all the way over, it'll still wobble back up. And this is the one I'll be making in this video. This weed pot wobbles, but it does not fall down. It doesn't really matter how far you tip it, it still will not fall down. Major success. Why anyone would want a weed pot that wobbles, I don't know. It just seemed like a cool thing to do. So, I'm going to show you a, a little bit of the internal design for this by doing some drawing. Then we'll get started turning. So how does this weed pot manage to do that without falling over? So here is our sphere, which is the weed pot. The center of gravity in the sphere is going to be dead center, as you would expect. A line drawn here by gravity is going to come down perpendicular to the face of the to the surface of the Earth, and. Uh, Center of gravity is always going to stay right in the middle, making the sphere rather smooth, smooth rolling. But if we modify this by putting the uh, putting some weight, say I'm going to put a lot of weight down in here, then the center of gravity is going to move down here somewhere. Now in this sphere, I've hollowed it out. So there's, there's not much material up here, very light up here. I'm going to put lead shot down in here. And so my center of gravity moves downward like that, towards the bottom of the sphere. Okay, everything's fine when it's sitting upright. The uh, center of gravity still is pointing straight down, and for that matter, always will be. So if we take that sphere and we're going to roll it, now we it's hollowed out. Here's the center of rotation. 
If we were taking this and rolling it this way, the center of gravity moves back this way. So now the rotation is right here, but the center of gravity is back here. So that center of gravity is going to be pulling this, this whole sphere to roll back this way. And as long as this center of gravity is far enough away from the center of rotation there, you'll have a weed pot that wobbles and doesn't fall down. If I don't put enough weight in here, it'll just flop over. Uh, it would just it would go to a certain point and still pop back. But as soon as you exceed the point where the center of gravity, uh, say, gets in line with the center of rotation, then it's going to just drop over like that or stay like that, something like that. So we want to move the center of gravity inside the sphere down as low as we can really towards the bottom. That's what I've done here. As I've said, I'm going to hollow this all out. And then down in this part, I'm going to put in uh, some lead shot that I have. And I think I got about uh, roughly that holds about a pound and a half, maybe a little bit less than that of lead shot for this particular volume that I've got. So let's go over to the lathe and uh, we'll get started on this. I've got a big chunk of spalted maple on here. This is about uh, a little over four inches uh, wide on the side. And I'm going to turn this down uh, to round and I hope to end up with a sphere uh, that's about three and a half inches, maybe a little bit larger than that, after all the turning is done. Now the length of this is about nine inches here. So I'm going to start turning fairly slow, about a thousand. So you can see it's a little bit out of balance already. Got that way too high there. Okay, this is down around. Good enough. It's uh, let's see what that is. It's about three and three quarter inches. So I'm just going to make my marks on here again. I shorten it just a little bit. There's my center mark, and that is the limits of the four inch sphere. As I mentioned, I want to put a tenon on each end so that I can chuck it. I will eventually be cutting it right about here, right apart, and so I want to chuck each end individually to hollow them out. Now this is set to uh, my chuck clamping diameter, so I'm going to cut that tenon. Very good, I've got my tenon now for both sides. It's a fairly deep set of jaws that I've got on my chuck, and so I turn the tenon to around an inch. All right, gonna make a couple of marking cuts here for the two limits. And I'm gonna start off the monstrous bead there with a half inch uh, spindle gouge. Now, as is pretty evident, I'm not using a jig or anything to determine this, uh, to get a perfect sphere. 
Um, it's really not that important. I want to have something that just looks like a round ball when I'm finished. And I'm going to put a decoration up on this end right up here anyway as part of the weed pot. That's pretty good for right now. All right, I'm going to cut this right in two. Now when I fill this, I'm only going to fill the bottom half, or maybe even less than the bottom half, with uh, some kind of weight. Most likely I'm going to use lead shot. So strictly speaking, I could cut it right down here below center line. I think though that I'm going to cut it right on center line. That'll give me a little more options for hollowing this out and getting enough weight in there so that the tipsy part of the Twig base will work. Using a narrow parting tool, and uh, since it doesn't have any clearance on it at all, I've turned the lay speed down to about a thousand. I'm not going to cut it all the way, I'm just going to cut it part way and finish it on the bandsaw. generating a lot of heat. So as I said, I'm going to finish up that cut over on the bandsaw. All right, I'm here on the bandsaw and I'm going to lower the blade guard some. Okay, there we have it. This is the bottom half right here. And uh, if you can see that little ridge right there, uh, you'll realize, as I just did, that using the narrow parting tool to cut it partially across was not such a great idea because the kerf left by the narrow parting tool is only a little bit wider than what I have, uh, than what the bandsaw blade cuts. So it was very difficult to get a, a cut just across the stub in here. So I'm going to have to uh, surface this and make sure it's true on both the top and the bottom before I try and glue them back together. Okay, it's not a big deal, but uh, minor consideration. Now this, I'm going to hollow out. I want to leave about uh, at least a quarter inch of material on the edges here, but the rest of it I want to remove because this is where the weight is going to go. I'm going to use a bowl gouge to hollow this out. It's more like a bowl anyway. Okay. About a thousand there. is good. Now I want to cut this flat. Now let's just take a look. 
look. Pretty good. Now just to finalize this edge right here, try and get it perfectly flat and smooth. Got a piece of sandpaper on a piece of board that spans it and just going to sand that down a little bit. All right. All right, that does it for the bottom piece. It's prepared, ready to get its weight in there. And now I'm going to hollow out the top piece as well. As I've mentioned earlier, the purpose of hollowing out the top piece as well as the bottom piece is to get the whole thing hollow, which means that when I put the weight down on the bottom piece, the center of gravity will be shifted farther downwards. On a practical matter, I found that um, it just absolutely would not work when I didn't hollow out the whole piece. I couldn't get enough weight down into the bottom. All right, that looks good. switch to a scraper now for the final cuts up this a little bit. And flatten the ends off the edges. That is good. Before I uh, do anything else to this, and there really isn't anything else to do to this, I need to drill a hole in it all the way through. It needs to go up through at least here, wherever um, the end of it is going to be. Now, the end of it is going to be right below here because I'm going to take this and curve it in, hollow it in that away so it'll be as light as possible. But I do need that hole. This is the hole, of course, for the flower stems to go in. I generally drill a 3 8 inch hole. Uh, rarely do I go larger than that because flower stems are pretty small for dried flowers. Uh, and if your hole is too big, they just kind of flop over sideways. They won't stand up right. So I'm going to drill this hole about uh, 400 or so, right about there, and it just needs to go in maybe an inch or so, hard to say exactly. All right, starting cutting at about 3 eighths. Using a Forstner bit on this, doesn't particularly matter in this case, I don't think. That is a distance of about two inches. Ooh. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Here is the bottom piece. Now, I need to put weight in here. What I'm going to use is some lead shot. I think it's about number eight lead shot. I'm not really sure because it's been so many years since I bought it and the price has sure gone up in the meantime. Anyway, I'm going to put loose lead shot in here and, uh, and then in order to keep it in place, I'm just going to glue this in with a little hot melt glue right into the top so that the weight won't shift around. That's uh, fairly important, I think, because if, uh, if the shot is left loose and you tip the thing over, well, the shot's just going to roll over here and It'll keep it in that orientation, but it won't flip back up. So, I've got a hot melt glue gun here. Yes, it's almost done. So I am going to put in a bunch of this lead shot here, which is really messy looking because I had mixed glue in with it in an earlier attempt at uh, this particular uh, project.
Jeez. Mixing the glue in, it wasn't perhaps my best idea. Pretty much want to get as much as I can in there. Because I want to lower that center of gravity as low as possible. Now, if you're following along at home, that shot has gotten pretty expensive. I hadn't bought any in a long time, as I mentioned. I priced it out last night on the web. Holy cow. Well, for about 25 pounds of lead shot, uh, you're looking at about 40 to 50 bucks, which uh, is a lot of money. On the other hand, the 20 pounds that I purchased uh, some years ago, quite a few years ago, at the rate that I use it, have lasted me a long, long time. However, the alternatives would be sand, which is not good. Um, in an earlier incarnation of this particular project, which didn't work out, I put in sand, weighed it, compared to that to the weight of the uh, lead shot, and there was a pretty substantial difference. With the sand, that much sand right there, uh, I got about uh, 9 ounces in weight. Now with that much lead shot right there, I am just under 2 pounds. So, pretty big difference there. You could also use uh, loose uh, hardware, nuts and bolts and stuff like that. It's not as dense as lead, and it's not going to give you as good a weight, but it's a lot more available and uh, considerably cheaper. Whatever you put in there, remember you want an even weight distribution. Say if you get too much weight on one side of that little semisphere, hemisphere there, uh, then the whole thing's going to sit crooked. So you don't want that to happen. So whatever weight you use, make sure it's something that you can uh, distribute evenly across it. Here we go. Now I'm going to use just this hot melt glue and seal this piece in forever and ever. And you want to avoid getting the hot melt glue on the mating edge there where I'm going to use wood glue to seal it because that doesn't do very well at all. I want to make sure that's in there good. Um, for one reason, as I said, I don't want the weight shifting around when it tippies. Uh, for another reason, since I've got lead shot in there, I don't want it coming out. And there will be a hole through the top uh, for the flower stems to go in, of course. So where the lead shot's just left in there totally loose, uh, they could come out when you if you turned it upside down. And that's not good. It is lead after all. We're ready to head back to the lathe and glue this up. All right, this is the top of the um, weed pot, and this is the base. Before I took it off, I made a mark here, right there. Show me where to put it back on there together. Okay, right about there. And so I'm going to bring up the tailstock to put pressure on this. And then let it sit up for a while. And I'm just going to use plain old woodworking glue for this. Now obviously it doesn't really need much glue. There's not really much surface area there. And I'm just going to spread it around here like this. In the tailstock I've just got uh, a live center with uh, no point to it. I guess it's sort of a cup center. It's actually used to have a point to it um, and it broke off and so now I use it as a cup center. All right, I don't think I need any more pressure on that. And that uh, woodworking glue is 30 minutes to set and two hours to cure. So I will probably not continue until tomorrow morning. The glue is set up. It's on there really tight. And I'm ready to finish this off. I'll be turning off 
this big chunk right here, uh, smoothing the whole thing down, sanding it, and cutting it off up here. After that, reverse mount it and finish up the top. I've sanded it with the first piece of sandpaper, in this case 150. Uh, before I proceed, what I'm going to do is put in some burn marks right here because I want to hide that uh, joint line right there. Put one mark right on the line. One to each side. Crank it up to about 2,000. Turn that in. Turn that in. And burn that one in. Before I part this off, I'm going to put uh, a couple of coats of finish on here. This is just a friction wax, friction polish rather. Oil, linseed oil, shellac, and some alcohol to dilute the shellac down. I'm just going to wipe it on first. And then subsequent coats, I will just put it on while it's running. That's about 2,500, 20, 2,300 right there. I'm sure it doesn't show, but I'm putting on a lot of pressure here. If that pad doesn't get hot in my fingers, uh, I don't think it's doing very well. So I put on a lot of pressure. After all, it's what the friction friction polish means all right that's good now last thing cut it off not the last thing but the last thing while it's mounted on here is just to cut it off right up there now remember when you're cutting through this there's already a 3 8 inch hole in there so it's actually going to release sooner than you expect like right there. All right, the last step is to finish this up. And for that, I'm going to cut a little recess in here and then bring the tailstock up for here. And that'll get me uh, the ability to uh, clean up most of this right there. All right, I have uh, reversed the piece in here. As you can see, I've got some paper towel right here uh, to cushion the bottom against the jam chuck there trying to keep the finish from getting uh, screwed up. And I'm going to stop right there. Now that ugly ragged hole right there, which is too large for putting flowers in, because they'll just flop all over unless you put some something down inside uh, some florist foam or something like that to hold them in place. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut a little insert that will fit inside there and put a little cap there. Um, and I'm going to turn it out of this little chunk of walnut so it'll be more like a decoration. And it's going to have the proper size hole in it, which is 3 eighths of an inch. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, the lathe is at about uh, 450 RPM there. I need to go in I think at least uh, an inch, maybe a couple inches. 
doesn't really matter. It's got to go all the way through the finished piece. And as always, with uh, particularly with a Forsner bit, I back it out frequently. Otherwise, it's liable to get stuck in there. There we are. I'm going to use my tenoning tool here and uh, put a 7 8 inch tenon on here, which I think will just fit right. I might have to make it a little smaller. Wow, is that noisy? All right, that's good. Now, this is a little bit too wide, I think, for the for the top there, so I'm going to slim it down a little bit, and then just cut a gentle dome across the top, and I'll secure it in place with uh, probably epoxy. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to run some sandpaper over that. And I'm going to put some finish on it. And I'll be right back. And we'll put it on the weed pot. Okay, we're at the last step. I'm going to put that piece in there. It actually looks fairly nice with that. And uh, let's see. Yep. That's not going to interfere with this uh, movement at all. Just wanted to show you one other thing, that tiny little uh, dime sized thing. I sanded just a very small flat on the bottom, just so that when, uh, when it is at the proper orientation for straight up, uh, that it will sit straight up and not to one side or the other, which is sometimes a problem if uh, the weights are not distributed evenly. This one seems to be okay, but uh, anyway. So, I've got some epoxy here. And I'm going to mix that up. Alright, there we have it. As soon as that sets up, it will be completely and finally done. It wobbles, but it won't fall down.